Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to talk about why do covert narcissists thrive on trying to trigger you? They love to trigger you, especially if they have disdain for you. Why The reason that they're trying to trigger you, you guys, is they want to cause reactive abuse and make you look crazy to everybody else. Covert narcissists are obsessed with image, how they are portrayed by other people. This is why the covert narcissist is always nice to outsiders. You could be at a you know, a gathering with a bunch of people and they're always going to be very charming. You know, they're going to show, you know, kindness and empathy and even to you in front of outsiders because they want people to think, you know, they're the good guy. They're a nice person. But then when you have that covert narcissist at home, they're wicked. They're cold. They're indifferent. They dismiss you. All right. They do it because of image. Also, a covert narcissist is very sadistic, okay? They, you know, they control their emotions. So that's why people say they're the most dangerous narcissist because you never see it coming with the wickedness of a covert narcissist because they're not, you know, forthright with it. They're not direct. They're not in your face telling you off most of the time unless you have them cornered and you really have their back against the wall. But most of the time, they're going to control their emotions and they're going to think to themselves, that's okay. I'll get you back later. I'll smear you behind your back to, you know, everybody else, family, friends, whoever is important to you. I'm going to make you look bad in everybody else's eyes. See, covert narcissists love to manipulate people. They love to manipulate everybody into thinking, you know, they're a good person. And the reason that they do it, the reason that the covert narcissist, they use flattery and charm to win people over is because, you know, that's their tool. They figure you get more bees with honey and they do that to the people that have the money or the people that have the power, the most important people that can benefit that covert narcissist, they are going to butter them up. Okay, and they're going to make you look bad because you are a threat. So when somebody tries to trigger you, the reason that they're triggering you is because you are a threat to that covert narcissist. Okay, because you most of the time are a truth teller or a direct, you know, you're a direct straight shooter and you are a threat because you are you will expose that covert narcissist. So what is the covert narcissist going to do? They're going to make you look like you're angry. They're going to make you look like you're crazy. They're going to have people question your mental state. They're going to have pe- people have no respect for you. And you see this a lot in families, okay? When you have a narcissistic family and you've got that covert narcissist in that family... That covert narcissist is going to divide the family. They're not about we are one big family of love or something like that. No, they are out for something. They're out usually for money or they're out for praise. They want to be the golden child or something along those lines. So what are they going to do? They're going to smear the other, you know, anybody who's in competition with them. That could be their siblings. That could be anybody that they are in competition with to make them look bad, okay? It's all manipulation. Now, when they manipulate these other people, there's really nothing you can do about that. You know, either these people are very, very, um, you know, ignorant and don't see the manipulation of the covert narcissist or... These other people have it in for you as well. So when that covert narcissist is smearing you indirectly, they're going to side with the covert narcissist because they already got a problem with you. So don't try to go to outsiders and try to get them, you know, as an ally. In other words, let's say you're dealing in another scenario with a covert narcissist and you're having problems with that covert narcissist and you go, let's say, to their family or something and you discuss the matter and everything. 
That family, if they're narcissistic, is not going to side with you. What The first thing they're going to do is go back to that covert narcissist and tell them what you said. And the covert narcissist and their family are going to commiserate against you. All right. They are not your ally. Understand that. And whoever sides with a covert narcissist, they're siding with that covert narcissist because they need that covert narcissist in their life. They might not always agree with the covert narcissist, and they may even know that the covert narcissist is wrong in what they're doing, but because they need that person for whatever it is, they their allegiance is to the covert narcissist. So the best thing to do is to distance yourself from all of these kind of toxic people, all right? But... You have to stay in control, okay? Like a lot of people are very, very anxious about the holidays. They have to see family members or people in get get togethers and they worry that they're gonna be triggered by somebody. You've gotta be a cool cucumber. You've gotta always say in the back of your mind, this person doesn't mean shit, okay? This person, anything that comes out of their mouth doesn't mean shit. They're toxic. They're trying to trigger me. And the best thing I could do is just turn and, you know, you walk out of the room. If somebody's blatantly like insulting you or criticizing you or making little jokes or being sarcastic, you disengage. You walk out of the room. That's your way of letting them know, I'm not going to entertain this nonsense. Okay. Or if you want to say something, you say, you know, I don't appreciate these comments. Okay. If you continue with it, you and I will not be talking. That's your way of putting up a boundary and letting them know that you are not going to be disrespected, okay? And they may do it in a joking manner and they may say something like, oh, you can't take a joke or something like that. You just, you stand up for yourself and you'd be like, you know what? I don't appreciate that. And if you continue doing it, I will not be here, okay? So, you know, don't let them get away with that kind of nonsense. So you either remove yourself or you let them know that if they do it again, you're not going to be around their company, okay? That's how you put up that boundary. But getting back to the root of why covert narcissists thrive on triggering you is because of their jealousy. Covert narcissists, the root of a lot of narcissism is not only the insecurity that they have, but the jealousy that they have for other people that may be doing better than them. And a lot of people say, I don't understand what they're jealous of me for. They could be jealous of you for 101 different reasons. Maybe they think you're prettier. Maybe they think you're smarter. Maybe you're doing well in your career. Or maybe just the fact that, you know, you stand up for yourself. You're not afraid to speak your mind. Whereas the covert narcissist is a straight up coward. They are a coward. They can't show their hand. They can't be vulnerable. So they are a basic coward that has to be indirect and passive aggressive to try to hurt you, okay? And why do they want to hurt you? Because you are a threat and they are jealous of you, okay? For whatever reason, or because they want the control and the power and for, you know, to be admired. They don't want you to get that admiration, all right? So... A lot of times, let's say you're talking in a group of people and you're telling people, you know, you're doing well in your job or things are going well for you. That covert narcissist is going to cut the conversation and interrupt and bring up something else. Or they're going to bring up themselves and say something like, oh, yeah, you know, you know what I did and blah, blah, blah. They're going to try to totally, you know, uh, switch up the conversation. So, you know, the attention is not on you. The attention is on them. Okay. The attention is on them. So you, number one, you have to know your target. The covert narcissist thrives on reactive abuse, setting you off. So you don't give it to them, okay? You show them indifference. You don't get angry. You don't, you know, nothing. You, they are nothing. You have to treat these people for what they are. You treat them like they're nothing, okay? Okay. Unless somebody blatantly, blatantly is outright trying to hurt you, in which case, you know, you set up that boundary and you let them know, you know, you continue this, we're not continuing at all, all right? 
you know, you, ha- you can't be afraid to stand up for yourself either, all right? A lot of times people say, oh, you know, disengage, disengage. And that is, you know, always the best is to always to disengage. But if somebody really s- does something over the top, you have to let them know, you know what? No, you do that again, there's going to be consequences here, all right? There's going to be consequences, all right? In other words, let's say you're dealing with a covert narcissist that's trying to smear you, you know, uh, for your, it's, and it affects your, your career or something like that. Anybody does something like that, you take legal action on them, all right? You sue that person. You let them know that they're not, they're not able to, you know, you don't just disengage. If somebody is really hurting you in the sense that it's hurting your livelihood or it's hurting your children or crossing the boundaries, then you take legal action. That's your way of letting them know you are nobody to be messed with, okay? And they, they're going to be slapped with a lawsuit, all right, or something like that. So, you guys, here it is. They want to do it, like I said, because you are a threat. And you have to say to yourself, in, in a way, it's almost like it's flattery in the sense that they think you're something terrific if, they th- if they're trying to trigger you, all right? They feel threatened by you because you have some kind of power and they're trying to tear down that power and control. And the way they do it is to discredit your mental state. Nobody loves to call you crazy like a covert narcissist. That's their trump card, okay? Oh, you're crazy. Oh, you have mental issues. Oh, you take everything to heart. Oh, I think you're bipolar. Oh, you know, go take your medicine or something like that. They'll make their little remarks and everything to try to discredit you or they'll try to discredit you to other people and make comments like, oh, you know, I think there's something wrong with them. They're so sensitive. I was just joking and everything like that. This is to try to make you look like you're crazy and you're a nut and everything like that. But what they're doing is they're trying to deflect from taking accountability or the fact that you're calling them out and you're exposing them. So this is their defense mechanism, you know, to stop you, okay? Because like, again, you are a threat. You are somebody that speaks the truth. You are going to call them out on that shame that they can't handle. So what are they going to do? They have to discredit your character. They have to say, you know, you have a mental issue, What better way to discredit somebody who's speaking the truth than to say, you know what, there's something crazy about them. You know, this way, everybody else doesn't believe you, okay? But people that are smart will see through the manipulation, okay? And if they don't see through the manipulation and they are smart, well, in other words, if if you have somebody rather that, you know, is not is siding with that covert narcissist it's only because they were in the covert narcissist corner from the get-go okay they're maybe one of their flying monkeys or they need that covert narcissist so the point is you guys don't be triggered don't give them the satisfaction keep your cool stay focused Sometimes when you're ready to, to be triggered, you have to stop yourself and you say, oh, 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 no, let me see. This person's trying to trigger me. Let me just not give any kind of, let me not feed the covert narcissist because when you react, you're feeding the covert narcissist. You're showing them they got to you and that's what they want to do. They want to upset you because covert narcissists are sadistic. They want to upset you. They're so laden with misery and jealousy that they thrive on hurting other people and especially other people that can expose them. They want to crush you, okay? They want to crush you because, again, I said you're a threat. But you have to just kind of step back from it disengage. And if it's over the top, you let them know, you know what, that's not appropriate. I I don't tolerate that. And if you do it again, there's going to be consequences. Okay. That's how you deal with the covert narcissist. And the best thing is to just stay away from them. Stay 
the fuck away from them because they're such snakes. They smile to people's faces and they stab you behind your back. In-laws are the biggest, co- some of the in-laws, if you have, you know, narcissistic covert in-laws, they, they are some of the wickedest. Smile to your face at a party and stab you in the back. Or if you have a sibling covert narcissist, smile to your face at a family get together and then turn their back. And then they alienate you and they isolate you. But then they protect to everybody else that, oh, you know, they have heart for you. It's all BS. They are secretly jealous of you. They're jealous. They're extremely insecure. They, you know, they're broken people. They're damaged people. Go listen to my podcast about how covert narcissists are damaged people. All right. And, you know, a lot of people were in the comments on YouTube and they were saying things like, You know, that's no excuse. Hurt people hurt other people. And that's absolutely right. Just because somebody is hurt and they hurt somebody else, it doesn't give them a right to do that. Okay. So you have to disengage from anybody that's trying to hurt you or trigger you. Or if they cross, you know, boundaries where it's causing, you know, a major injury to you or to your family or to your children or something. Then you take legal action. You let these people know you, you're nobody to be played with, okay? Trust me, I know. I've done it a thousand times, okay? And, you know, they'll think twice about playing with you because covert narcissists know who they can and they can't play with. So, you know, you've got to, you, you, you guys, you got to be focused. You got to stand strong to the truth, You can't show these people that they intimidate you because part of the triggering is to intimidate you and, and, you know, make you also question your own, you know, judgment. This is what they want to do. They want you to, you know, sway and, and start to doubt yourself. Like you get a lot of people that have this when they say, well, you know, they called me the narcissist and I don't know, could I be the narcissist? No, you're dealing with a toxic person that's calling you the narcissist because they're deflecting off themselves. They're projecting onto you what they are and they want you to believe that you are the problem. Okay. If you're sitting there and you're saying to yourself, well, maybe I am the narcissist, you know, and you're sitting there and you're thinking about it and you're self-reflecting, Chances are you're not the narcissist because you're able to look at yourself and say, well, maybe I do have a problem. Whereas a narcissist will never say, oh, I have a problem. No, it's your problem. Okay. Everything is your problem. You know, the greatest defense is an offense. Blame somebody else. And that's the narcissist. And that's a big major clue that you're dealing with a narcissist is when they won't take accountability and they flip it on you and say, you're the problem. They love to do this. Okay. Cause they got nothing else to say. So they'll flip it. Now, you know, it's also a deflection from, you know, having to face shame and taking accountability. But you guys, I know it takes a lot of self-control not to go off on that covert narcissist. Cause some of them are so bad. You just want to, you know, You just want to let them have it. You just want to let them have it. But remember where it's coming from. You're dealing with a messed up, insecure, jealous person that has it in for you. That's trying to hurt you and trying to make you look bad in front of other people. So don't give it to them. Don't give it to them. Step back from it. Stick to the facts. If anybody else, any of the outsiders come to you and question you on it, you stick to the facts. Stay, you know, stay strong in the truth, okay? And you'll always stay on top. And, you know, don't, you know, don't be around these people, okay? Because they are not your people. They are not your supporters. So the minute that you see any kind of this shadiness, You've got to get away from it. You've got to say, okay, you know, I'm not going to go toe to toe. I'm not going to, and, and I had this, you guys, I had this in family. I had this with other people where I used to go toe to toe. Cause you know, I've had to be a fighter because I've dealt with so many toxic people. Oh my gosh. That's why I know so much about narcissism. And, you know, I'm a very direct person. I'm a straight shooter. So when I see things that didn't look right to me, 
I used to go back and forth with the narcissist, back and forth, back and forth, arguing, arguing, arguing. And then I'd go months without talking to them. And, and then, you know, they had their flying monkeys and everything like that. And I got to a point where I said, you know what, this is doing nothing but making me look bad because they will never see my point of view. They will never, they want to see only what they want to see, period, dot, end of story. So this is why you limit your exposure to that narcissist if you have to deal with them. And, you know, you don't get into it in the thick of it, okay? Like if you go to the, your family's house and you're worried about being triggered by these covert narcissists, narcissists or something, you know, stick to, you know, superficial shit to talk about. Talk about the weather. Talk about your dog. Talk about anything, you know, without getting into things that you're going to go back and forth because you're not going to win with these people, all right? And there's always somebody that's the scapegoat or the target. So the best thing to do is shut your mouth and stay away from it, okay? Because, and you don't have to prove yourself to the narcissist because, you know, they're, they're, what a narcissist thinks doesn't mean shit because they're toxic. They don't have an open mind. They don't speak the truth. They are liars. Once you realize that you're dealing with, with a toxic narcissist, just know that, you know, they're just a liar and you can't trust anything that they say. But the point of this podcast is to not be triggered by the covert narcissist and understand that this person, you know, has it in for you. They want to discredit the whole point of a reactive abuse. Reactive abuse is to upset you and to discredit you to everybody else. So the best thing to do is to step back, you know, give them a smile like, okay, and just walk away like they're nothing, okay? You're not, you're not baiting me, you know, you're not even worth the time or my breath and you walk away, okay? You're better than that. You walk away. So I hope that helps you. If it does, Please hit the subscribe button and please share the podcast. Have a great day. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it. Go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question, and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Visio where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio. And you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp 123 and also on Instagram, the game exp 123 Okay? And have a great day. Mm-hmm.